Ok, ciao ciao, uh, buongiorno uh, o buonasera and ben, uh, welcome back to this three-part series on fast-tracking your Italian. Uh, this is video three of the series, so that means that we've already seen uh, video one and video two, so if you haven't, I strongly suggest that you click on the side to uh, where it's going to take you to video one and video two and then come back uh, here because uh, we're going, uh, we'll keep looking at uh, tricks and things that you can do to pick up Italian a lot more quickly or improve the, uh, your existing uh, Italian. Um, so today we're looking at learning Italian sentence structure in no time. Um, we'll look at tricks to speak in longer and more complex sentences and then we'll close with um, seeing how you can pick up basic or travelers Italian in just five weeks. Um, this is all uh, coming up. So. The main, the first topic, which is the main thing for today, is Italian sentences. Now, I see that um, with my, in my experience with teaching, most people think that they can't really express themselves in long sentences because they don't know how to structure a sentence. Uh, now, of course, to talk in sentences, you need to know a little bit more Italian. So if you're brand new to Italian, this might not serve you right now, but it's key that you remember this because it will help you definitely uh, as you uh, add information to, uh, to your knowledge of Italian. So it's not true that making up an Italian sentence is difficult. It's completely false and you will see that Italian and English share the same structure in 90% of the cases. So if I were to say what I just said in Italian, it would sound just the same, but with Italian words. How would I have the same word order as I had in English? And I forgot what I said, but... Um, so you get the idea that uh, the, the way you, you will speak in Italian follows the same order as you do speak in English. So, you know, level one, you will focus on the vocabulary. So you would have the same sentence, just kind of simplifying the grammar and just using the vocabulary that serves you to be understood. Level two, you would fill in with the correct grammar, but the idea is that the structure shouldn't be your worry. So if you're taking anything out of this uh, segment, uh, if you don't know a lot of Italian to even make up a sentence, is you will never have to worry about an Italian sentence structure. And, you know, this is big news for most people because most people really think that you have to worry about um, structuring a, a sentence in a, a, in a certain way and it's really not true. 90% uh, of the times we have the same structure. So if I were to say something like, um, let's say, uh, good evening, um, good evening, I would like a coffee with two teaspoons of sugar and a hint of milk, making it up. Well, it would be the same in Italian, so it would be Buonasera, vorrei un caffè con due cucchiaini di zucchero, two teaspoons of sugar. It's just word per word, really. Um, e un po' di latte and a hint of milk. Just the same structure. So. Let's not worry about structure and let's look more in the specifics of how we can mu master this thing. And the secret is in learning to speak in blocks. Understanding that when we speak in English, we speak in blocks. So what do I mean by we speak in blocks? So if I were to talk to you uh, and, uh, and tell you about a certain film that I saw, I would say, hey, you know, Jane, that's your name <laughs> in my example. Hey, you know, Jane, last night I went to the movies and I saw The Hunger Games. You know, it was pretty cool. We have blocks. Italian will use the same blocks. So I would say, you know, pause Jane. So I would say, say Jane, same. Uh, last night, you know, the way we say, so last night, I went to the movies. Now, we wouldn't have to have a pause there, but we tend to talk with emphasis. And, you know, and that's the key. That's 
why we actually want to master Italian structure and speak in longer sentences is because when we speak in longer sentences, our personality comes through. And when our personality comes through, we impress people more and there's more connection and your experience in Italy will be better. Um, usually the problem we have when we speak a foreign language because we speak so little and basic, we feel, sometimes we feel like, uh, I can't say enough, I feel like I'm giving the impression that I'm stupid, but I'm not. But I'm not. Well, you don't have to because Italian structure uh, sentences are the same as English. All you have to do is first learn the vocab and then fill in with a little piece of grammar and it's not that hard to fill in with a little piece of grammar. Um, and so, um, so last night, last night I went to the movies. Ieri sera sono andato al cinema and I saw The Hunger Games. E ho visto The Hunger Games. You know, that was pretty cool. Sai che ti dico? Era figo. You know, I'm just using Italian words for the same thing, but I'm speaking in blocks, which means that uh, I have a few examples, actually, that might really help. I have this example. It's, it's kind of a silly sentence, but let's say I wanted, I wanted to say something like, tomorrow, I would like to go to the park with my friend Jane and take some pictures of the flowers. Now, when you look at this sentence, it's, a, it's kind of a long, complex sentence in English, and you might think that you would never be able to say that in Italian. Well, I tell you, you would. Of course, you would need a little bit of vocab. <laughs> but, you know, let's look at the English. Say, tomorrow, I would like to go. Let's make it, let's show you the blocks. Tomorrow, I would like to go. Why am I saying that I would like to go as a block? Well, because I by itself doesn't mean anything. Tomorrow does. You know, when are you coming? Tomorrow. Tomorrow is something that you can say by itself. But I, not really. I would, would what? You know, it comes natural. you would what? Well, I would like, you would like what? To go. Oh, so that's a block. I would like to go. And when we speak, if we make a pause, it would be at the end of the block. We wouldn't say, I would like to go. Or I would like to go. You know, we would say, I would like to go. I'd like to go. We, we say, you know, quicker. So that's a block. We want to maintain that block in Italian. Now, to the park. To the park. Now, to by itself, not a, not a block. The, to the, to the what? Park, to the park, that's a block. And so on, with my friend Jane, that's one block. And take some pictures now, and it doesn't have to be part of the block, but we put it there to be convenient, make it convenient. But, and take some pictures, that's a complete thing. Take some pictures of, of what? Of the, of the what? Of the flowers. So you have five blocks in this sentence. Well, guess how this is going to look like in Italian. Domani, which is the word for tomorrow. Vorrei andare. Now, vorrei andare, that looks scary, but it's not. Every time you want him to say, I would like in English, you would say vorrei. So if you, say, if you want to say, I would like a coffee, you would say vorrei un caffè for a coffee. Vorrei un cappuccino. I would like a cappuccino. So... Vorrei is the equivalent of I would like. Now, like in English, say I would like to go. Now, to go is the idea of going. Well, the Italian dictionary entry, so that's easy to find, of to go is andare. So you don't even have to change it. So dictionary will tell you what to say. Domani vorrei andare. Tomorrow I would like to go. Now, to the park. In Italian, we have al parco. That al is a combined thing of a il, which is to the, so it's literally the same order as English, al parco. But, you know, of course, that's what I'm saying, you should know a little bit of grammar, because if you don't know how to say to the, this sentence would be a little bit more difficult for you, but it doesn't take long to learn that to is a, and then you get il parco, uh, al parco. Con la mia amica Jane, con is with, la mia is my, Amica is friend and Jane is Jane. So, con la mia amica Jane, same as English. E fare delle fotografie and take some photos. Now, in Italian we say fare, which is make some photos. And if you speak to Italians who speak English, they'll make that mistake. They'll say make photos instead of take photos. But, you know, even if you said take, they'll get what you mean because the sentence is clear and you're talking about photos. So, fare delle fotografie. Delle means some. Dei fiori means of the flowers. And again, it's 
of the flowers. That day is simply D, which means of, and E fiori. So D E fiori. And as you progress with your Italian, you, you'll realize that we don't say D E fiori, we say dei fiori. But if you said D E fiori, they'll understand. And that's the idea. You want to be understood. So, um, the English sentence, tomorrow I would like to go to the park with my friend Jane and take some pictures of the flowers, will become domani vorrei andare al parco con la mia amica Jane a fare delle fotografie dei fiori. So now you've just talked about this huge thing. You've, you've expressed a very big com uh, complex thought which makes you feel good. It makes you look intelligent. Not Probably not this statement, but anything else that you might want to say. Like, um, you know, instead of just saying... Um, the film is good, il film è bello, you can say, you know, uh, the film is good. I was surprised to see that the actors uh, acted so well and the photography was particularly interesting. Well, guess what? You can do that when you know a little bit of Italian, not much. So be brave and try um, to speak more uh, any longer sentences. Okay. There's only one exception to this thing. So I've said that 90% of the times Italian and English share the same structure. Well, sent questions have a slightly different structure, okay? So they don't um, work the same as English or, or they don't always, don't always work the same as English. So the first one I've got actually works the same as English, which is where is the station? Dove? Where is a the la stazione? Station. So so when we use the word where, it works the same as English. But when we use other question words, it might not always work the same as English. So what happens with questions is when we use a question word like uh, quando, come, cosa, perché, all those question words, the verb comes right after. So it's the case with where is, dove. But when you look at the next question is quando parte il treno per Roma? Can you tell what that means? Quando means when, if you don't know what quando means. Now, you've got kind of putting all together everything that we've learned in the last three uh, sessions. Well, treno sounds like train. Roma sounds like Rome. So per must be the word that means that it's the train going to Rome, right? So il treno per Roma means the train to Rome. Now, parte, hmm, what could parte mean? I don't have a word in English. That, ah, but in the ter in in the f in the f uh, context of trains, we have departures and arrivals. Oh, depart, part, parte, parte. Oh, that, could it be that parte means it departs? Well, it does. And so now you know that when is quando. So when does the train for Rome or to Rome leave? So we wouldn't word it the same way in English. So that's when. Using English is not going to work on uh, bringing it across to Italian. But if you just remember that if it's a question word, after the question, after the question word, you put the, the verb uh, and, then you, and then you sort it. Um, okay, so um, over the first, over these three videos, we looked at ways that you can either jumpstart your Italian. So if you're brand new, take all that you've seen here, and you can watch it again, it's available for you, it's gonna be stay here for a long time. So watch it again and kind of see that once you take all these pieces into account, as you start learning Italian, you'll see how, how much easier it is. Now the big takeaway from this series of, is obviously the vocabulary. Realizing that half of the Italian vocabulary you already know, you just have to Italianize it. And the more you learn Italian, whether it's, um, elsewhere or with a university course or with myself, um, you'll see that there are patterns that really come up all the time. And after you've seen them a few times, you just make up words. As long as they are Latin in origin, as you're thinking them. And so the second biggest takeaway would be how to spot a Latin word. And I hope that was really helpful. I can tell that all of my students at the university that I teach love to realize that they don't need to f struggle too much to pick up vocabulary because half of it is the same as English and therefore it's predictable and therefore they can guess it. Um, and then we looked at the, the structure uh, of a sentence 
And again, like I said, you need to have a little bit more Italian to apply that, but keep that in mind as you're learning Italian. So all this was my way of helping you realize that you can pick up Italian, that it's actually not that hard to get started with Italian, and it's not hard to speak to a point where they understand you. And that is the key. I think if you're here, you appreciate how important it is for you to pick up just a tiny bit of Italian if you're going to Italy. As a reminder, they don't speak English. And the fact is that you're visiting their country. And now they have, Italy has 40 million travelers going through Italy every year. So that there's a lot of tourists and they've become kind of des desensitized to dealing with pe tourists as people and treating them as people, you know, often, especially if your approach is English or, well, usually it would be English. If you approach them in English, assuming that they'll speak English or they'll understand you, even if you're in a five-star hotel, assuming that they'll speak English kind of makes it like you're telling them, um, I don't care about getting to know you and your country, which is not true because you're there, but that's the impression they're getting. And so showing them that you're making even the smallest effort to start conversation in Italian and even just say, oh, buongiorno, buonasera, uh, scusi, non parlo molto italiano, uh, non parlo molto bene italiano, o lei parla inglese, even just this little approach in Italian or ordering your meal in Italian, making a few mistakes, but whatever it takes for you to impress on them the idea that you care about them, that you're really interested in their culture and all it takes is this little to make to create a huge shift in their reaction to you. Um, the moment they kind of you break in that pattern, like, oh, it's not just one of the millions of tourists, it's somebody nice, it's somebody who's, who's funny, or somebody who's got a personality, somebody who's talking to me. And they're trying to speak in my language, which is, you know, not like the most widely spoken language in the world. I mean, it is spoken in Italy, Switzerland, Argentina, and Australia but it's still not a huge language and yet they're speaking it to me. And that's, it's gonna kind of initiate a cycle of um, nice treatment and what I call VIP treatment. And so I hope you do keep going with your journey on learning Italian.